Now, during the mid-80s in Brooklyn, New York, a meeting between Calvin Martin and a close associate took place in the apartment building. Now, Calvin Martin was set to purchase a half-kid coat. Now, Calvin shows up to the meeting with another guy unexpectedly. The drug dealer hands over the drugs, and Calvin tells the friend to pay the dealer. The friend smiles and tells him that he was broke, and that Calvin said that he would pay for the drugs. When Calvin looks up at his friend and smiles, that's when the dealer knew it was a robbery. What's up, people? Let's get the likes up and turn the notifications on. Because some of y'all been missing out lately. If you missed part one, stop this video and go check that out. Now, don't forget to subscribe. Don't be a stranger. And show love in the comments. Now, if you see Mike Tyson and 50 Cent in the same room, you know some shit about to go down. Now, this video was supposed to be dropped for the upper echelon members, which is $5 a month. But I decided to give you a taste of the type of content that will be dropped on there. So if interested, the link will be pinned in the comments in the description. Now, the whole thing about rappers getting their chains or jewelry took and paying to get them back, who you think started that? The hustlers that 50 Cent used to rob used to pay to get their jewelry back, to keep it on the low. Because what hurts more than physical pain? Humiliation. Someone that's supposed to be big and bad would rather not tell his homies he was caught slipping by a little old 50. And we all know Calvin Martin had no picks. And I mean the son of a gun was robbing his own friends. Now, when 50 Cent names started to ring bells in Brooklyn, people heard different stories but couldn't put a face to him. They would hear about the wreck, and when they would finally see him, they would be like, damn, that's him? The females would hear his name, and when they finally saw him, they would start to have a crush on him because of how popular he was becoming. He would be getting some of the flyest chicks in Brooklyn. He was allegedly shot over piping down the drug dealer's wife. He was dangerous, and females love danger. They like the bad guys. But anyway, now if you knew Mike Tyson, he got a lot of love from the hood. You can see him in pictures with the kingpins and gangsters from New York. He's in the pick with big names like Haitian Jack and Dementia. It was safe to say that he was good in the hood because he was from there. Now, this was a little bit after 50 Cent was discharged from the army. And yes, when things got super hot, he developed enemies from all over. So he decided to go to the army, which upped his skills to use a gun, and he couldn't wait to practice that on cats in the streets. He did basic training in Georgia, but he had an armed robbery charge that would come up in the system, and he would have to be removed. Now, Tyson was already a millionaire, and he carried a good amount of cash, or he'd have someone carry the money for him. I don't know if this was before or after the Mitch Green incident, but Tyson wasn't getting robbed. He wasn't the type to let someone come and take something from him. Even at gunpoint, you would have to shoot Tyson. Now, let's just say if he did get a chain snatched by 50 or one of his little dudes, because, you know, they was little when they was fast. It was hard to catch. They were so small. A couple of phone calls would have been made and 50 would have had to return it. Even though 50 was shysty, he would have just replaced it with a fake one. But that's just how he rode. There's only two people that would try Tyson on the streets. The first person is Mitch Green and the second person is 50 Cent. So people was watching 50's every move and still close by him because you don't know what's going through his head. Now, Say if you had a celebrity friend visit in the hood. You would tell him that he's good in the hood because he's with you, right? And you know how them guys used to rock in the 80s with them big old gold Cubans. Guys would pay 50 not to act up because they knew robbery and extortion was his bread and butter. That's all he knew. He already tried the 9 to 5. That wasn't cutting it because the amount of money wasn't worth the time. He would get a job, break a couple hours, go on a lunch break, and he would never come back. He tried selling drugs. That wasn't cutting it. He thought the money was too slow. He'd rather go about his day than meet drug dealers at the end of their shift just to rob them. That was the most convenient things for him. Now, he had some wild little homies that would walk out of stores without paying for things. They would do things just to impress them and show him the things that they would take. Now, 50 was the live in the moment type of guy. He never thought about what comes after, like revenge or reputation. He looked at it one way. He pulls the gun out and they give it up. 
He never had the plan in his head on, what if they don't give it up? Now they have to shoot the guy. Now they have to shoot the celebrity that doesn't give it up. He was so in the moment that he would rob somebody at a spot and show up to the same spot the very next day to hang out. Now, 50 took a lot of ass whippers here and there. He knew that's what it came with. And he never felt bad for himself either because he knew he played too much. Just like I said in the one dimensional video, you will put hands on him and still come back. He's like that annoying fly. You beat him with fists, he'll come back with a bat. You beat him with a knife, he'll come back with a gun. And if you beat him with a gun, you better kill him because he'll keep coming back until one of you is dead. And of course he never robbed Tyson, but Tyson was definitely slipping. I'm just showing you how close he used to get to these celebrities, how close the young stick up kid was getting close to the biggest names in the industry. He died at only 23 years old, and he didn't believe in paying or working for anything. He didn't believe in working hard or paying for nothing. It got to a point that guys would brag about getting robbed by him. That's how crazy it was. Now, we might get into a part three because I'm getting a little bit more information on the guy. So make sure you subscribe and turn on the notifications. I want to thank each of you for watching it. And I hope you return to the next video because we're taking it back to the 60s in the city of brotherly love philly talking about ryan harvey so stay tuned people stay blessed i'm out